here's what I was taught when I was going through school. There was the famous Urey experiment, 1952, I looked it up, where if you put in a chamber all the chemicals that were supposed to have been present when Earth was at the moment when life arose, and introduced, I seem to remember from textbooks, the idea that there was some terrible thunderstorm. So you mix it all up with electricity. And a couple of scientists, Yuri at the University of Chicago, tried this. And lo and behold, somehow or other, they managed to form a few amino acids. They didn't form life, but that's because you have to run the experiment a lot of times. And as I understand it, now, again, to the extent that we understand, you couldn't, the more we, try to run better experiments than Yuri was able to in 1952, the farther we are from actually creating anything that could be recognized as life. Is that roughly correct? Yes. So uh, once again, we have this understanding which is receding from us rather than finding ourselves approaching it. What does that mean? Well, it means with that we're understanding more the complexity that was not realized at the time. They thought, I think, that it was just enough to get a few amino acids and hey presto, it would happen. They knew nothing of the linguistic structure. And so what has happened subsequently is it has receded, as you say, because we've discovered more and more about the sheer sophistication about what life is. And by the way, nobody really knows what life is. Huge irony is that 1953, you have the Miller-Urey experiment, big flash in the media, but you also have the Watson and Crick discovery. And the two things have run counter to each other ever since. Miller and Urey produced two or maybe three protein forming amino acids out of the ensemble of 20 that you would need to build a whole protein. But more importantly, they didn't show how you could sequence the amino acids properly to get them to fold into proteins. To do that, you need instructions. And those instructions were found on the DNA molecule. And it's the origin of the code that pre has presented the most acute problem for origin of life research, because chemistry simply doesn't move in the direction of informational complexity. It moves in other directions. One, so one other origin. You can't get from chemistry to code. That's if, the problem. If I could just hop yeah. in just for a sec. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, I just add that the the uh, process you described that people were hopeful in the fifth, early 50s and the more they worked, the more difficult they saw the problem to be. That means you're barking up the wrong tree. That's the signature of a wrong idea because if you have the right idea, you expect future results to haste to support it. Again, like Einstein. Exactly, but on the other hand, Darwin thought the cell was a little glob of jello, but the more and more we find, the more and more and more sophisticated uh, genetic code, uh, splicing of DNA, molecular machinery, uh, and, and so on. That's, for a, an intelligent design mm -hmm. proponent, that looks like you're barking up the right tree. Mm -hmm.